Hey guys, in case the Wall of Swords didn't give it away, I'm in Wellington, New Zealand at legendary Weta Workshop, a model maker's paradise. Weta is super famous for its miniature work on films like Lord of the Rings. In fact, they got so good at making miniatures, they made them so large, they started coining a term for them called bigatures. And we're about to look at some absolutely gobsmackingly beautiful bigatures built for their series, Thunderbirds Argo. Let's take a look. Ben, tell me where we're standing. What's going on behind us here? Behind us here is one of the uh, more elaborate and somewhat magnificent miniatures from season one, the, the 1 to 12 scale Tracy Island Lounge and House. Now when you say magnificent, I don't even think that comes close to describing <laughs> what it's like to be here. This is, uh, I mean, Weta is famous for bigatures, yeah. giant miniatures. Yeah. But how many, how many people spent how long making this miniature? <clears throat> thing? This, this was a, this was a, a tricky miniature to build. Uh, it was probably about maybe 16 to 18 technicians working on this thing. 12 weeks. 12 weeks of, That's of fast. labor. Yeah, it is, it is fast and it's the world of, of Thunderbirds and when you compare it to, to miniature based movies in the past, uh, we had to up the ante in terms of how quick we made these things. Yeah, yeah. But having a miniature build background, you didn't want to compromise on quality. No. So this is the result, is a pretty, pretty cool looking model. So for reference, 112 scale is twice dollhouse scale. Correct. Is that right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you'd see a, a a person would be about that that big at one to twelve. That's six inches tall. Yeah. Yeah. About yeah. six inches, something like that. And now, I've just occurred to me that one twelfth scale is actually a remnant of imperial measurements. So, yes. is that just a giant nightmare in metric? <laughs> yeah, it, it is. But it's, <laughs> it's funny though because when you when you talk in scale and deal with scale, you go you just go into that mindset and yeah. you separate it out. But then. If we're, if we're making sets, we revert straight away back to metric right. with measurements and millimeters and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's interesting and when, when describing things to, to uh, American clients, because obviously the show's now with Amazon, which is awesome, um, you, have to, you have to, every time you say, oh, it's about 300 millimeters, it's like, oh yeah, what's that in inches? <laughs> <laughs> so I've got the app on my phone. Oh, you now. do? Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we used to run into trouble at Industrial Light and Magic with some scales, like 1 16th scale, but sometimes we'd build something to one sixteenth inch scale. Yeah, oh, gosh. Right? <laughs> Those are where all of a sudden someone delivers yeah. something like Stonehenge. No, this isn't the only scale yeah. you guys yeah. were working in. No, uh, we we multiple scales. And and the good thing about Thunderbirds, personally, is I, I honed my ability to uh, recognize and and choose a scale just from my head. You, you know, I used to look at charts and all that right. kind of stuff. And, we didn't, we didn't have time to do that, so so we got very good at jumping between scales and even just looking at a storyboard, we could pretty much immediately tell that's got to be one to six, one to twelfth, one oh. to twenty fourth, and and ninety percent of the time we'd be right. So and how do you film on a set like this? Are you climbing all over it? Are you able to? So so the set was built uh, with the the practicalities of, of shooting in mind and shooting in a hurry because um, another big important fact about Thunderbirds is okay I'll just give you a few a few shoot facts on a on a on a back on the day on, on King Kong or Lord of the Rings we probably would have got one or two shots maybe every three days because you're shooting Mocon wow. you're shooting multiple yeah. passes yeah. Mm -hmm. Thunderbirds we were averaging about 27 shots a day <sighs> So it puts it in, in, you know. That means you can't just think like a model maker. You no. have to also think like the filmmaker. Co correct. And you have to think, how, how do they practically get the camera in here quickly? So, for example, here, this whole pull section, yep. um, the whole thing gets removed if we want to, to get the camera in the lounge and get all the coverage. So, so we started, I think when we shot this, we started with that out. Right, we had right. the camera in. We did all the coverage in the lounge. When we were happy with that, this came back in. We did all the coverage around the pool. And the last thing was all the all the rocks came in, and we did the nice big wide establishes that you see in the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything's got a steel armature inside it, right. so so I can um, I can stand up on this. Yeah, yeah. And and um, <laughs> obviously with you know shoes off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and so the model makers could, if they needed to, they could safely climb up and carefully adjust um, set dressing for continuity, that kind of thing. So it was treated like a real set. 
And there's lots of practical lights on the set. You're able to individually control them all? Yes, yep. So all, all, everything, um, you, normally we'd have about three or four days of just practical lighting installment, mm -hmm. and that all runs to a DMX board, and then we'd um, have them all labelled so we could bring up evening lighting, day lighting, different practicals at different times. Nice. Um, that, that, that's such a huge part of the show, this miniatures, and I'm pretty sure it, we just shot, we shot on it for one day. So all that build time, we got all our shots in one day. Um, wow. Yeah. So pretty, and it's pretty, got a secret here in the pool. It, it does. It does. Uh, people, people that are familiar with the show may know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I think they might. Um, and uh, so this is basically uh, where one, uh, one very recognizable spacecraft comes out of with a big number one on the side of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would you like to do the honors? Uh, yeah, please. Thank yeah. you. Ah, oh, yeah, the pool <laughs> recedes underneath the house. That's, that's a, the practical aspects of having to make the pool full of water and yeah. move. Yeah. That's that's a lot of engineering. Yeah, yeah, and and pretty much all puppeteering is, is hand driven. We right. we had very little you know things on servos or all that kind of stuff just because of time and, and expense. So. Awesome. <laughs> oh my God, it's so beautiful <laughs> there's the pool there's the house yeah exact replica at a, it, at a different scale do you do you, sometimes you have some cognitive dissonance of working at working yeah. on something at multiple scales making chairs tiny chairs even tinier yeah yeah, yeah. it's it, you, do, you do and it's it's almost like a, um you, you kind of get lost in the scales and you start getting a sense of deja vu as well it's like yeah. i've been here before have i built this yeah have i built this already <laughs> but i'm sure it was bigger so um this was this was actually built first before the twelfth. Oh, okay. But obviously we had very set plans, and uh, we could go into it obviously more detail when we built the twelfth and add more things because you only ever see this wide, being the scale that it is. And the mountain here is this carved in urethane foam? Correct. Yeah. Okay. This is basically uh, taken from we 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 have big silicon rock molds. That's what I was just going to yeah. ask. And those yeah. do you have some of those from Lord of the Rings mm. and from other projects you guys have done? Yes. Yep. From Lord of the Rings, from King Kong, um, from Narnia. There's there's a whole stack, and we also got some freshly cast rock as well. Right. There's a really good cliff, a local cliff. It's a local secret, the Rock Society in Wellington. <laughs> um, so then we cast out big panels. This was built as a 3D model, so we could get all the shapes right. And then we um, cut, cut all the rock up into panels, stitch it together with kebab sticks, uh, build this foam in between, yeah, and then yeah. that's all carved out again, and it becomes a, a, a one big, you know, natural-looking piece of uh, geology. And can some of these fly out? So that you can have access. No, this was all all one wow. set. Um, this this was a, another big shoot. I think uh, this is also very early on. This is on a big steel frame. Right. This whole island. Right. The reason it has to be on a big steel frame is because being polystyrene and being foam rock, it floated. <laughs> it wanted to float, and we had, we had to have the whole thing in a giant wet set. Oh so, wow! So this whole thing set in two hundred mils of water. Oh my God! Practical water. Yeah. Um, and it was a real, like, it's really hard, it's, it's easy to make things float, it's really hard to make them sink. Oh, I know. <laughs> I Water be, displacement I you know, is a bear. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. yeah. My cameraman at one point wanted to build a box to put his camera in, and he made it, he said, is this a good size? And I said, yeah. you realize you're going to be pushing down yeah. on 850 yeah. pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is thousands of pounds. Yeah, it was amazing. Did it you was... bolt it to the floor? Yeah, so we, we, we had big rails that we, we laid down, big, big, heavy steel rails that we laid down in the tank, and then this was bolted to those rails. But even then, I had to go and get a whole lot of um, lead, yeah. big lead panels that we then put all on the frame, and we wow. only just made it. You know, it was... It was tricky, and and this the, the then the engineering in the tank itself was, yeah. Now over Something here else. we've got a piece that you guys also built in a larger scale. I want to go take a look at it. All right, let's go have right. a look. Okay. All right. All right, Ben. So what uh, what happens in this part of the mountain? This is the secret right. exit. Right. Uh, well, this is another little piece of the mountain that any uh, any true Thunderbirds fan would be very familiar with. Absolutely. And it's often uh, the favourite. I find with the craft. Um, of course, we're talking about Thunderbird Two, the big, the big green blamon. Yeah, as I like to call it. <laughs> blamon. <laughs> nice. Um, so this is essentially a, a hidden runway. That's a, it's a, it's a very recognisable piece of puppetry from the Thunderbirds universe. And this, this was a real pleasure to shoot on. I've got to say. Now I notice uh, the rocks are bigger. So when yes. you have some rock molds, do you label on them good for one twelfth to one twenty fourth scale? Good for 
Yeah, we do. We do. We we have a we we group them. We have the the finer uh, finer rock grain that obviously becomes like the the Tracy Island that we were yeah. looking at earlier, the hundredth scale. Uh, this this runway is essentially uh, one to thirty fifth scale. So again, Tracy Lounge was one to twelfth. The island was one to one hundredth. <laughs> now we're looking at one to thirty fifth, and it's all to do with um, again practicalities of shooting depth of field, yeah. what's involved. We had to build Thunderbird 2 to be on here. So uh, if we go if we go to 1 to 12th, suddenly Thunderbird 2 at 1 to 12th scale is about four and a half meters long. So that dictates how big this set can be. Correct, yeah. Right. So originally we looked at 12th, it was like, well, that can't happen. Let's go 35th. And even that was pushing it. So. And there's a, you can practically puppet this one. You sure can. It's still set up. Would, can would I, you can, like to have a can go? Can I do it? You can. All right. Please. This is so freaking cool. Here we go. Oh. That reveals Thunderbird oh. 2. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that was just as satisfying in person as you imagined. Yeah. So you'll see, you know, that that's pretty much in every episode at least once is yes. that sequence that you just did. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at the under detail and everything. And these are like little, um, you know, if, if there's any ever accidents, they're like, they spray fire retardant and all that kind of stuff and CO2 and yeah. That's great. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'm going to put it back. Oh, yeah, what else? yeah. What? Oh, I was just going to say, we actually, um, another set we'll have a look at in a minute, yeah. we actually placed it around the back of this. That, that, there at the moment is a oh, cutout. So you didn't have a flat piece of artwork No, actually. no, we, we had a fully three metre deep, deep full dimensional Thunderbird 2 uh, oh, hanger. A lot which of lighting. I can show you. And a, did you a put a mountain lighting. on either side of this? Uh, we, oh, again, huge. <laughs> we had, we had a, well, this is, we're in the water here. Oh, okay. So this would be water. Right, we we right, didn't right. have it with a set, but all, this whole wall extended into the, the start of Tracy Island. Right, so right, we probably right, went to about seven metres high, that, that rock wall. It's, again, it's disconcertingly large for a <laughs> miniature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's a bigger take a look chair. at the next interior. Yeah. All right, so this is the hangar behind what, our, what we just puppeted. It is indeed. It's so beautiful. Th Thunderbird 2's hangar. This is, this, is, this is the set I think I would have had yeah. the most fun yeah. working on inside, yeah. Yeah. gluing everything in. Yeah, it was lots of fun, and it's, it's lots of fun working out, you know, how does all this gantry work, integrate with all this organic rock? Right. And, and the, the, the sort of um, the premise behind this whole thing was like, th these, this isn't a family that's going to go into an island and... And, and cut out a whole lot of rock to make their hangar. They've they've worked with the natural geography of the of the rock and, yeah. the, and the natural way the cave's shaped. So that's the kind of look that we went for. It it really, it sort of like goes right to a kid's mind of what you want a secret. It is everything you want a secret hideout to be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is this practical? Does it move? Yeah, we we uh, uh, practical in that we had a piece of nylon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pulling it across. <laughs> and and the other important thing about about this show is yes, it's uh, pushing the miniature thing, and which I'm very passionate about. But but also I'm I'm just as passionate about how we integrate it with the CG. Right. The element of the right. show, which is the ships, the characters, and I think it's um, it's always important to, to keep that in mind when you're building the miniatures because they have to integrate. And I think that's one thing the show's been very successful at was is that that marrying of the two disciplines together, and um, that makes it quite a unique show, you know. It's and that also goes to show, I mean, the kind of integration that happens here at Weta that I see from knowing folks here is that. Um, that's being paid attention to on all the levels. It's yes. not like the film department says to the model mm. shop, go yeah. and do this. Yes. It's like you guys all have it's, to really work on that. We do, we do. Yep. Everybody works together as, as one unit f from the get-go so, so that we understand how it's all going to work together. And, and it pays off. You know, for, for example, that we had this thing being puppeteered out, yeah. but it was leading the pods, and the pods were CG. So, so you, have, you have a CG, we had right. a CG Thunderbird 2 in here up on its legs, the pods get dragged out until we, it chooses the one it wants and then it lowered down, rotated around, exited our miniature. So it was a real, and, and a lot of people can't tell the difference, you know, it's, yeah. it's, which is the cool thing. So. Am I seeing um, some of this gantry work? Is this laser cut? That's all laser cut, all okay. that gantry work, yep. So you yep. guys are using some old model techniques. I see some kit bashing going on, yep. perhaps even some toys that have been upgraded significantly. <laughs> Indeed, yep. Toy yep. pieces and yep. then Absolutely. advanced lighting, yep. set dressing, yep. and then laser cutting, 3D, yep. 3D printing. 3D, 3D printing, modeling. laser cutting, yep. Um, Pretty much bashing. everything anyone's ever done to build a model is in 
in here. Absolutely, and, and it's, it's whatever gets us there that makes it look good that gets us there the most efficiently. And, and we have all those, all those tools at our disposal now, they're all very accessible, so it, it creates a, a set like this. Ben, when, when I was a kid seeing Godzilla movies, and I learned from my dad, who was a filmmaker, that these were miniatures that people were building and they spent thousands of hours and they built them from scratch. Yeah. This is precisely what I thought model making should feel like. Yeah. I imagine that all of you working <laughs> on this were like sort of fulfilling yeah. childhood uh, dreams. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and everybody that uh, that comes in and sees us working on them says exactly that. It's like, you know, you, you guys must have the dream job. Yeah. And and we do, it's 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 great fun. Like, like any job, we, we're under deadlines, you yeah. know, so, yeah. so you've always got that in your mind, but it is, it's, it's um, you know, we, we're doing what we did as kids, but we're getting paid for it. Yeah, it's and awesome. do you see some things <laughs> when you're looking at the drawings, you're like, oh, I'm definitely going to take that yeah. one to yeah. build. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> There's fights. Is There's there, fights in the model shop. Is, there, yeah, is yeah. there a piece in here that you're particularly fond of? <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm very fond of um, the, the, this is the refueling hangar. So in here we have Thunderbird 1, Thunderbird 3, Thunderbird 4. And this is where Thunderbird 5 is loaded up as well, which is the one in space. Thunderbird 3 is my favorite part of this. It's this, this big silo and he, he sits in here. Yeah. And to get this to work, it was quite hard because um, we had to practically have the uh, silo close oh. for Thunderbird 2 to take right, off. Of course, of course. Right? And, um, but what we found is when we first started rehearsing, I, I was up there on a big handle turning it, but yeah. when I turned it, the whole set did this. <laughs> so it was, like Plan you know, 9 from outer yeah, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's like there's certain, there's certain things that we embrace in the show that are happy accidents. That was probably taking it a little bit too far. Sure. So we had to go through and re-brace it, get, get this all, and it took a while to get all the bearings running smoothly. But once we had it, you'll see it in the show, it's a beautifully smooth move, and it was very satisfying. So I think that's my favorite part is this, this sort of Thunderbird 3 launch area. It's beautiful and no, I mean, there's not many films using big miniatures anymore. No. As no. set extensions even, it's it's no. mostly CG now. Yeah. So it, yeah. it, you yeah. know, I, 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 I did some of these for Industrial Light and Magic and then watched as the jobs went away. Yeah, yeah. So it must be lovely to go it, back it, to these. It, it is lovely and, and I, you know, I have a background in, in miniatures on, on movies, but there was a huge gap in my career where there were no miniatures yeah. and, and then this came back and so, it was a real pleasure to jump back on this, and I'm really hoping, you know, maybe it'll ignite something back into the industry. And, and well, I mean, it's seeing miniatures like this that got me interested in film. Yep. It got Peter and Richard interested in. Yep. You know, it's yep. like these are the things that we all grew up on, yep. and we haven't even seen all of the incredible miniatures you guys have built. No, no, I, and and that brings me to a fact: uh, season one, we built 120 models. And miniatures, separate sets. Yeah. 120 for, for for one season. Season two, we built about 87, but but they were bigger. Oh my so, god. So so, you know, huge, huge, huge numbers, huge turnaround. And where we're standing, this is actually publicly accessible. The public can come take a look at these sets in Wellington. Absolutely, the public can come and 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 do do what you've just done. They can come and have a look at the puppeteering. Thunderbird 2 palm trees, uh, it's here in Wellington and it's it's open to the public. This must be one of the very few things that gets a whole bunch of 10 year olds to actually pay attention yeah, yeah. for more than a minute. It's amazing to watch, <laughs> amazing to watch, mesmerized. You're inspiring a whole other generation <laughs> yeah. of craftspeople, filmmakers, model makers. Absolutely and that's that's really satisfying and you get that combination of maybe it's igniting something in the kids that they, they could do this as a career and plus their, their mums and dads are just just as mesmerised as they are because it, it brings back memories for them. So it's a real, it's a, a, a you know, without sounding cheesy, it's a whole thing the whole family can enjoy, and, but, which is it, awesome. Again, you know, whether it takes its takes the artifacts of its construction really seriously and yeah. archives them and keeps them extant so that they can be enjoyed yeah. later, and yes. I really appreciate that when I come yeah. here and yeah. everything is all over yeah. the place. Yes, it's beautiful. yeah, it is beautiful, and, and we as model makers appreciate it because it preserves them really mm -hmm. nicely, and, yeah. and you know, which is. is is, can be a hard thing to do. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Ben, thank you so much for showing me a little bit of the Thunderbirds <laughs> universe. It's absolutely You're welcome. gobsmacking. You're welcome. Lovely to meet you.